thank you very much for this opportunity. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I know you are tired. The way you came is different by now. You are not feeling the same. So quickly, turn to your neighbor and ask them that, how are you feeling? Okay. Just be honest. If you are tired, you can say, I'm tired. And if you are not tired, you can say, I am not tired. I know from 14 hours to now, <laughs> I know you have gotten me different answers. Very, very quickly, I was given to speak about entrepreneurship. Now we are going to do something like our elder, Elder Levi said that he will go through the scriptures in the same way. Even me, I'm going to do entrepreneurship from the Bible. You already understand and know very well that when we are talking about entrepreneurship, it is the process of setting up a business. And the person who wants to start that business, you call him an entrepreneur. So today we will read something very, very quickly. Second Thessalonica chapter 3, verses 6. I'll go to verse 10. You, you, you mark verse 10 because verse 10 is where I want to dwell very much. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the life does not live according to the teachings you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to you to any of you we did we did this not because we do not have the light to such help but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate for even when we were with you we gave you this law the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat Hello? Hello? The one who is not willing to work shall not eat. So what am I trying to say? You heard from the alumni how what they said. It's not 100% that immediately you graduate, then the job will be there. Then you find the work. So I am here to come and try to, to do something with you. And what we are going to look at today is what the Lord can do with you. And what the Lord can do with you, when you are here at Onza, you are here only to receive the knowledge and the trainings. You are not here to receive the work. The work you have to go and search for it after you have graduated as an engineer or a contractor, whatever you are going to, to pursue. When you finish that, then you are going to look for work after you have graduated. So now today, there are some of you that maybe, God forbid, are going to fail. And when you fail, don't think that that is the end of your life. When you fail, there is other things you can do. You are here, you've acquired the knowledge. And that knowledge that you have acquired, you can still do something. And to all some people who are, for example, who are in the school of education, when you finish the school and you don't find the work, you don't get the employed, don't think that that is the end of you. No, you are here, you have learned. You have known how to manage a school, how to start a school. So all you need is not now to look for work, but it's the time for you to create or to make a school somewhere where you can start maybe a nursery school because the knowledge you already have. So this is the direction we are going to deal with today. 
Hello? If I, because I know very well that many people here, it will be maybe difficult for us to understand very well to say that, I know, we are believers. The, the verses where we led, we know what was happening to the church. The, the second, second Thessalonica, Paul was trying to collect the confusion that was at Thessalonica. And the confusion that was there was that since we are waiting for the Lord, we are waiting for the coming of the Lord, some brothers were passing, were moving around, telling people that there is no need to wait. Just wait for the Lord. But Paul came to collect this mistake, saying, no, brothers, this is wrong. You can't say that because you are waiting for the Lord, then there is no need for you to wait. It is the same today with us who are here at Unza. Even when you, you have finished the, you have finished your school, you have graduated. Don't think that now because you have graduated, you need to sit idle. You need to start waiting for job to come to find you. When you can't find the work, the, the unfortunate part is this one. In Zambia and the other part of Africa, we are being tutored in a way that you need to learn, and when you learn, you need to work for somebody. But I want to remove this in you. If this, this knowledge, this saying is not true, where you, you, they just tell you that you need to, to, to make sure that after you finish the school, then look for the job. If you are coming from Unza, you will find a better job. No, this is not true. What I'm putting across to you today is that when you are here, you are here to be trained. How you look, when David was in the field taking care of the frog, he was there only to be trained how he's going to do what, how he's going to protect the children of Israel, how the Lord was going to work through him. It is the same with us today. When you are here, this is just a training ground to show you that after school, there is many opportunities. You can't just look at the government to provide employment. I know many of us, and some of us in here, that's what you are looking for. Others will be very lucky. Immediately you finish the school, you are going to find the work. You will be working. But now I'm talking to those that maybe when you finish the school, you have good, uh, you have your degrees, and everything is okay, that the job is not coming. Maybe God is telling you that this is not your purpose. Hello? This is not your calling. You are supposed to be a boss, but you want to become a worker. You are pushing yourself to start working when you can be the director. Hello? <laughs> Whatever. Umuntu, someone is pushing himself forcing himself, applying every day, you are here trying, here and there, trying to find a way, but this is not the way it should be. For some of you, you are destined for greatness. So when work day is not coming, just try to see other avenues. The knowledge you already have. I have given one example, to say that, for example, from the school of teaching, you have completed, you have graduated, and you, you have not found employment. Check, what do you have? You have maybe a two-roomed house. From that house, you can start a nursery school. After the nursery school, I tell you it goes to a primary school. When the primary school grows, other teachers from the University of Zambia will be employed by you. Hello? <laughs> you, you just look at the oh, come, you can come on the, <laughs> you can come away with you. And you will tell you people that like, we are together, they are my colleagues. <laughs> you know, now you are their director. And they will call you, oh, he's, a, he's a good man, he's our director. Remove in your mind the mindset of every time wanting to work, wanting to work for someone. It must start from now. When you are here, try to do something. I know of one boy who is every time doing small, small businesses, is here at Rosa. I invited him to come, but he said he was busy with other things. 
every time he comes, he, he goes around, he goes into Tanzania, he goes to Africa, he buys things. The things he buys, he comes and sells to you guys. And he makes a profit for himself. So, this mind of telling you that all is needed for you is to find a way this should die. You know, in Zambia, if someone is doing a small business by themselves, you ask them, are you working? Do you know the answer? They'll give you a They'll say that I'm not working. Why they tell you that I'm not working? It is because the mind is corrupt. They believe that working is only to work for someone else. But we will kill this one, we will kill this mind today by knowing what is supposed to be done. There are many businesses that, are, that can be done. And in the entrepreneurship, maybe the challenge is the level where you take yourself at. Especially you guys from here at Unza. Brothers and sisters here at Unza, you have elevated yourself at a higher level. So when we are talking of entrepreneurship, especially small scale entrepreneurship, with a degree, someone will refuse to do that. For example, because in entrepreneurship, there must be a stepping stone where you have to start from, then you go at another level. Now, you guys here, when you have the degrees, you have the money, all the papers are there, and the work is not coming, to tell you that, okay, brother, we'll give you every advice, you can start something. Maybe for now, you can start by doing, by walking around, buying things and selling. The answer you are going to say, you say, no, that level is too small for me. Hello. <laughs> so, this is the danger that is there. Most people, especially graduates, you want to start big. But in entrepreneurship, those who want to start always remember you have to start small. You cannot start big. Unless otherwise you have a lot of money or your family has got money already. But the challenges are this. Those families that have got too much money, when you give a graduate a lot of money to start a business without the experience, they always fail. Because they don't know how to grow a business. A business grow like a tree. It must be watered every day and it must be taken care of every day. But if you don't know this, a business will not grow, will remain at the same position. So what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that you provide what to do. Sometimes what causes this is the fear of the unknown. People are afraid to engage themselves in entrepreneurship, to start something. They are afraid. Why are they are afraid? You don't you know. You ask them, start business. They will tell you that how I am going to fail. I will not do anything. Who will tell you that you are going to fail? Many people are afraid, and why they are afraid? They don't know even why they are afraid. They only know that in business, when you start doing something for yourself, you have to go down. That is not true. The Bible is very clear, very categorically clear. In the Proverbs number 14 and the verses 23, in all labor there is profit. In all labor there is profit. But idle chatter leads only to poverty. When you're just being with me, talking, 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 I, I have seen some people when we were starting some business, when there was nothing to do for us, we decided no. Let me start some business. Some people were busy talking. Ah, no, it's going to fail. Nothing you do. This and this. They talked a lot of things. But when the business prospered, they came by themselves to start confessing and testifying that, you know, this one was, uh, uh, was saying these bad things about you, bad things about you. Now I'm here. I want you to employ me. But when it was starting, it was small. They said, no, I can't even go there. So, I am trying to open your minds that it is very true that for some of you here, as we are sitting right now, a minute after your graduation, one month, maybe two months, maybe three months, you are going to be employed. But for some of you, 
you stay even a year minus being employed, then you know that you yourself have to create employment. You are directors. Maybe God is, is planning great things for you, but you are trying to limit him. He wants you to be the owner of that clinic where you are busy working from. You, you are busy applying it. No, I want to I want I want I want to work. Going as a teacher, he then changed the career. He went to Lilai to do this thing for the uh, police. And when he was not employed, I see him now at the known doing uh, farmers. So I was telling him, no, <laughs> you need to create your own way. All this you are doing, you get here the degree, you get a certificate here, you get the diploma here. It's a waste of time. Maybe you are not called for this. Maybe God has, he has got a better plan for you. So some people are having pleasure. That's why you see them, they finish this course, they can't find the work, then they want to do another course. They feel maybe the course they do was wrong. The course was not wrong. The wrong person is you. Who is not finding the employment? Hello? Hello? So I am here to open your minds. So that even when you do not find the way, don't blame yourself. When you are not employed, count it all joy. Just ask God. Ask God. If I, I, you, you haven't given me work. All my friends who graduated together, they have been employed. What about me? Play to God. He will direct you. He will show you what is yours. And when yours he will come, even them will be surprised. Others will be saying, ah, but we are together. How come you have a company and we are working? Hello? <laughs> the, 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 the problem is that many people are afraid of the unknown. Number three is the mentality or mindset in Africa. In Africa, many people are scared to start business. They are afraid that, no, in a, maybe if I start business, they will be calling me that I'm a neutralist, I'm a satanist. But I tell you the truth, that for some of us who have experienced through entrepreneurship and have seen a business grow, we got, those are the names they call us. From the family, from the friends, you cannot learn away from this. They always go that maybe if they see anyone dies in the family, they say it is him. How come his, his business always flourishes? It is not any ritualist. It is God who makes every business to do what? To flourish. But you find the people say, no, how come his, his business is flourishing? Brothers and sisters, I tell you that when you make sure you work with you, you ask God, show me what to do. He's going to show you. That business will start small. And when it is very small, many people are scared. Many people you feel shy. Sometimes you fail even to introduce your faith that this is my business I'm doing. But this is the good time to introduce them. So that when it grows, they can testify that we saw that business grow. The in the Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, it says, The blessings of the Lord enriches someone and adds no sorrow to it. Only the blessings of the Lord, of the devil, adds sorrow. If you acquire your wealth through the jujus and what what, you'll be complaining every day. But if your, if your wealth you have is from the Lord, you'll be rejoicing. And it will never go down. It will always be going up. The business you are seeing that they are all always growing up, it is because they believe in the Lord and the Lord gave them the businesses. So even the people that have got the businesses, I know our elder for to, to learn his company, that is his business and he's enjoying it. It's different from when he was working for someone. Why well, is it the same? Huh? It's not the same. When you work for someone, they give you a salary of 10,000 up to maybe 20,000 quarter. But when you work for yourself, you make in a month maybe 100,000, 200,000 quarter, 300,000 quarter. That's the demand. Because the business is yours. And you have no one to share with. The workers will get what you agreed with. So the companies, they cannot even say, no, director, we've made too much profit. Let's share, increase our uh, salary. There's nothing like that. <laughs> Do you do 
that. <laughs> you make too much profit, then you, you agree with your wife as your manager that you'll be getting 12,000 and you make profit, the profit exceeds your expectation. Do you say that oh, I'm going to increase something? There's nothing like that. Unless himself, unless himself feels good, he will just say, you see, my brothers, let, let me go for a party so that we can just enjoy it just for our success. That's the only thing that we can do. So, what I'm telling you is to remove the fear in you so that you can go ahead. There are many things that happen, but my time is very, very limited. This is my topic, it needs about an hour for me to finish. Now my time is very limited. I want to tell you the things you need to do so that you can succeed in opening a business. I'll tell you very quickly. So that you can, you can succeed in opening a business. Number one, you need to make sure that what you do, you work wholeheartedly. As you, are, as you are working to the Lord, not to men. This you can find in Colossians chapter 3, verses 23. When you are working, you are doing your own business, you must be honest. Your business must be straightforward. And the type of business that you do must not be illegal business. You can't do, you say, no, the Lord has shown me that I will be doing a drugs. No, the Lord will not show you that. It's not a lot of confusion. The Lord has shown me that I'll be producing pornographic movies. The Lord will never show you that. That is the day who can show you that one. If you find that, you know, the Lord has shown me that I opened a nightclub so that I can make money. I know those of nightclubs who make money, but the Lord will never show you that. That is not coming from the Lord. The, what the Lord will show you will show you business that will pay off and the businesses that himself will be seen in it. People, when you are doing that business, they will be not seeing you, they will be seeing the Lord in it. That's what the Lord can show you. Any business that you are doing, and the people, they say, ah, no, oh, you, this person is working with God. God is with him. Then you know that that is a collective business. You cannot say, no, no, I open up a business. The, the business is bringing confusion. I know there are many, there's too much profit. For example, you order a drum of chuhuku. I know I've got a friend who runs a bar. He always tells me that when you order like chuhuku for about 10,000 water, you make profit up to about 30,000. The profit is about times three. But that should not move you believers. Instead, this should make you feel bad. That it is destroying the lives of people. You need to do the businesses that are genuine. So you make sure that you are honest. See, Proverbs, Proverbs number 11, what you call it, verse 1. Proverbs number 11, verse 1, it says, The Lord hates dishonest scales. So when you are doing your business, even the people, they don't know where you buy the things. You need to be fair to yourself. Why you have to be fair? Because the fear of the Lord is in you. You are doing this business not as to, 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 to men, but you are doing it as to the Lord. It's a service. So when you are doing it, you make sure you are honest. Not you do business because they don't know where you buy the things. You want to, to, to overcharge people. You want to make to, to become a billionaire in one day. No, brothers, no sisters. That should not be done. The business that you have to do, it must, it must be done according according to the to the will of the Lord. Like I told you earlier that my time <laughs> my time is not is always against me. So I will maybe I will not even go further than this because the time is always against us. We, we need to know that uh, the Lord is the one who makes someone rich. No one can make you rich. University of Zambia will not make you rich. We'll give you the documents. Hello? You will become graduates.
but will not make you rich. Only God will make you rich. And even you today, the relationship that you have today, the brothers have spoken, they went into details, they've explained exactly where they built with. You need to have a relationship with God. So when you have a relationship with God, it is only God that makes people rich. And you are going to be rich. To remove this fear, remove this anxiety, remove this, I cannot do it. You can do it. Brothers and sisters, time is always against us, but you need to know that even the type of your business, the type of your work you are doing, it must be excellent. It must be above the others. If you, 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 you decide to open up a school, a conventional school, when you are staying, as a teacher, I opened a nursery school in a two-room house. You were you testify that I started my school in a two two-room house. The, the quality of your teaching must be not of that of just lashing for the money, but where even the community will say, Yes, is the teacher we were waiting for. Look at our children, how they are learning. You you, you don't just find a way of just making profit and not delivering the service. It's not true. It shouldn't be done like that. You must make sure that it is done in good faith. The other thing that you should do, if you want your business to grow, when you are starting your business, relationship with your clients. It's very important. Those that you supply the things, or those that you, you, you have sold the things to, should be able to advertise for you that brothers and sisters, there is a man on this side who sells suits and his suits are very unique. I will not take you further than this because my time is uh, against me, but we thank God that uh, maybe next time we'll go further than this because there are many points that have remained so that you need to know that business is another option. When you graduate and you find that the the school, you graduate and the society is not offering you employment, just to know that there is another option. And the other option that the Lord has, remain, has left for you is for you to start your own business. And you will do it, and you are going to manage. Even to those that have failed, sometimes others you are busy failing. Three, four times you are failing. It's not that you are failing because you don't have the, you are not wise. It's because it is not your field. The Lord wants to make you rich. The richest people in the world are not the most educated people in the world. When you are, when we try to, to look at them, they are not even educated. Eh? Bill Gates. Which university was he? Hello? Yeah? Elon Musk. Which university was he? Eh? But the Lord is using we are at very, very higher university. The doctors is using, they are very, very educated. So what am I trying to say? I am not trying to deny to say that school is bad. I am trying to give you the option and opening your mind that you can still do other things if school fails. May the good Lord bless his work. Amen.